Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to usher you in through the weekend of February 15th. Of course, tomorrow, basically tonight, marks the day of the beginning of the end. No, just kidding. It's the beginning of the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival, which will be going on starting tonight. They'll be playing movies at the Elks Lodge, the Roxy, the Wilma, all around Missoula. Documentaries will be all over 150 different films, and that's what's going on. But let's talk about weather, what you guys can expect this week as we get into it. This weekend, we have that winter advisory warning until about noon today. Um, you can expect highs to be 36. Um, pretty much stay that way. Sunday, we're going to see some colder temperatures, see uh, some of what we saw earlier this week with low temperatures of uh, single digits by Sunday night. So you got to look out for that. But, you, exp you know, it snowed overnight. We got a good uh, half inch of snow, I believe. Um, yeah. And you can get more information by going to the nationalweatherservice.gov. All right, let's talk about some news. Missoula County Public Schools are asking... Uh, the Beach Bus, bus Company to install seatbelts in all of their buses to ensure kids sit down and shut up. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but it's a safety concern that MCP is taking seriously as they negotiate their future partnership with Beach Transportation. Click it or ticket, but a lot of times the school buses don't have to click it. Um, Montana is one of uh, 42 states that does not require school buses to have seatbelts, despite numerous attempts by lawmakers to pass legislation that would mandate the change. 48 out of 72 buses owned by Beach Transportation will be retrofitted to include seatbelts by fall 2000. 2019, and it's going to cost $10,000 to retrofit each bus, which is totaling $480,000 that would ultimately fall onto taxpayers. Uh, Helena School Buses have seatbelts, and with MCPS's budget of $4 million a year for transportation, um, and that's kind of what's happening here locally. Um, in state news, there was an avalanche near St. Regis uh, at, at the 34-mile uh, stretch westbound I-90 remained closed due to the avalanche Thursday. Um, Missoula Department of Transportation said earlier Thursday in a tweet that five semis have crashed five miles east of Idaho border. Um, the Montana Department of Transportation closed the highway westbound lanes from St. Regis to Idaho border shortly after 4 p.m. Wednesday when an avalanche spilled onto the road about mile marker 33.5 uh, near St. Regis. There has uh, been two known avalanches, one there and one at mile marker one. Uh, to see any further road closures or any... Uh, things going on right now, you can go to mdt.gov, um, and it kind of shows you the closures and incidents. Um, it's just a nice tool in case you're wondering about what the road conditions are, because there's a lot of seasonal uh, roads that are closed during the winter, um, just because, you know, MDT and uh, don't have the infrastructure to plow a lot of the uh, Highway 45s and that kind of deal. So um, let's see. But yeah, but so far I-90 is open, so uh, you guys can travel on I-90. Uh, it's one of the, it's interstate, so there's a lot of people who need that road to travel and transport things. So they definitely opened up by the end of Thursday, and it is open now. Okay, in national news, uh, taxes, people are expect, uh, President Trump promised that his tax changes passed in his tax reform back in 2017 would give most Americans a tax cut. But the only problem is that you might not be getting quite the refund you were expecting. According to the IRS, tax refunds are 8% less than last year. The smaller refunds have triggered shock and anger. Taxpayers faced with smaller refunds or higher taxes have been airing their grievances online in the hashtag um, GOP tax scam and GOP tax scam stories. Meanwhile, Donald Trump Jr. and others have pushed back, claiming that the complainers are misinformed. Some IRS folks say that some people will see their lower taxes, but not so much on the refund check that they were hoping for. The biggest thing is how much people are putting into taxes. Trump Jr. said that the refunds are smaller because people are putting less into taxes. But of course, while that's going on over there, the tax overhaul gave most Americans a break in which they owe the government. Uh, however, those tax gains were expected to spread unevenly across income brackets, with high earners enjoying the biggest windfall. Um, household earnings between a half a million to a million dollars would see an average income of 4.2% after taxes, while households earning between 50 and 75,000 would see their income um, increase by 1.5% after taxes. In all, the average household was expected to get a tax cut of $1,600, uh, the tax policy uh, center calculated. But 
yeah, so that's kind of what's happening in the news. Uh, here's a couple brand uh, new programs. We're going to be uh, kicking off Ballet Beyond Borders. We still have, we're still playing the uh, Montana Book Festival. You can see some of those. Those are great. And then we also have... Um, some history from Bonner, and it's kind of like a, a round table where a lot of people were talking about the history of the Missoula County and other communities around this, uh, around Missoula. So without further ado, here are some of the new programs, and when I come back, I'm going to be talking about movies that are coming out this weekend, so stay with me. Dahlberg's Pool Hall. It burned down in 1932, um, which means at the end of Prohibition, near the end of Prohibition, um, and that was what they called bars back then were pool halls, uh, one of the things they called them in, 19, in <laughs> Prohibition. Um, but it was a, it was a, I guess, a, a community center at the time. Um, they had movies, to show movies upstairs, Rene Levesque's barber shop, and uh, and things like that. It burned down in 1932. A couple of, if I get my months correct, it was a week after the Lutheran bar, uh, church burned down in 1932, and it was a couple of weeks be, or a couple months before. The Whispering Pines burned down in 1932. That was a big year, and of course that was the end of Prohibition. There may have been some connections there. I don't know. Some days I want to use muggle as a slur. <laughs> I want you are not magic to hold in it the kind of sting that burns all morning. There's a way that someone who's never been in a fist fight kind of wants that. But what the city is good for, remembering the one climbable willow still mermaiding through the park at dusk. The lifetime membership can be such a ripoff, but it just really depends. <laughs> and at some point, that sucker of a stormtrooper must have realized those were the droids he was looking for. <laughs> And then what? <laughs> a gas light purpling the path. The swim up bartender calls it a Miami vice. Half pina colada, half daiquiri swirl. The heroic part is that inside out underwear still works. <laughs> Well, as technology becomes more and more prevalent in our future, uh, a movie comes out once in a while that just kind of uh, rehashes the same old story about um, robots, um, technology, dystopian future, blah, 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 about how technology can uh, ruin us and that kind of deal. So, the, you know, this movie is kind of like that again, you know, Matrix, blah, 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 robots, cyborgs, you know, Chappie those kind of movies, but tis the time for an action-packed thrill ride that only CGI seems to capture, yet hard to track with your eyes, especially if you're having those 3D glasses, because I'm serious, like sometimes when I put on 3D glasses, I'm just like, whoa, oh, mm. so basically you miss pretty much 80% of something that's probably an Easter egg that has to refer to like the old, uh, the original story, so let's take a uh, Japanese intellectual property and make it into an Americanized movie about a young uh, robot cyborg trying to figure out her purpose. So, like The Wizard of Oz, and Oz is the, ca the cyberpunk future dystopian setting, and she's Dorothy, Alita, Battle Angel. I might say pass, but you know, but look at the colors. 
right? All right, moving on. The next movie that's coming out is a sequel of a movie that has a tendency to be its own sequel within its first movie. It's a Groundhog Day-esque horror, thriller, sci-fi type movie, as if they can't put enough into this movie. Watch yet another Groundhog Day-esque movie that follows Jessie Roth on her quest to get to tomorrow or run the risk of redoing her day over and over again. You know, there's there's not really like there's no really high risk because if she dies, she comes back. Uh, so this movie seems easy enough since they only need to, a few uh, shooting locations. Um, you know, they can shoot in they can pretty much shoot 80% of the movie in three different spots, and that's pretty much it. Um, but of course, don't drop the remote just yet because you might just have to watch this movie again and again, and not even death can give you sweet release. Moving on, fighting with my family. You like wrestling? Well, here's a movie for you. While some at home might be professional uh, fighting socialites, you know, MMA, boxing, if that's still a thing, but they have a movie that brings it back to the beginning of it all. WWE sponsored this movie about a girl who just wants to fight like some of the boys. Basically, the trailer shows her family auditioning for wrestling. Uh, so her brother and her. Um, oh wait, no, never mind. He's gone. Um, we follow a young girl to become herself, but better. And they have The Rock, Dwayne The Rock Johnson in there. He's also executive producer, which means, you know, he just wants to, you know, the executives want him to feel special, so they make him executive producer. It's one of those blanket terms people do. Anyways, The Rock is in this movie, and other wrestlers that you might know. So if you're a big, avid fan of WWE wrestling uh, from the 90s, um, or whatever, you can enjoy this. All right, that's pretty much for, for, for pre-critic, um, as I prejudge movies whether they need it or not. All right, let's talk about movie. Um, we had a movie, uh, Flagship Friday. It is uh, the Flagship Friday video of the week, and it is called Hide and Slash, because, a bun hey, a bunch of the Flagship kid kids love those horror films, and we made a horror film for you guys to enjoy. So when I come back, I'm going to talk about City Council, because it's good. Because in uh, the city council talks about MCAT, um, which is great because this is MCAT. You're watching MCAT. So without further ado, here is Flagship Friday Video of the Week. And then when I come back, I'll talk about MCAT some more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You better run because I'm coming. Hello? Hello? I got you! I'm terrible at this game. I think I lost him. Ah! Are you crazy? Are you trying to get me caught? All is very nice. See, Dan's over here. Oh, you're so mean.
Hey guys, welcome back. I just want to uh, mention um, that Flagship has started this week, and we're going to kick, uh, it's a nice movie to kind of like end on, because we'll be hopefully starting a new uh, Flagship Friday uh, season based on the winter spring program as it just started this week. So we'll see how that turns out next Friday. So whether you get a Flagship Friday video next week, it all determines whether or not I make a movie this week. All right, so let's talk about some things, talking about some city council. And we're going to get some sweet, sweet city council. And if you are interested in finding out more about your own city of Missoula and more and looking for permits and anything like that, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. I see that they fixed their uh, photo generator right here because it's been blank for the last couple weeks. So good for them. All right, let's talk about some um, items. So I'm going to look refer to my notes. Uh, Committee of the Whole. And they're talking about ward boundaries. Currently, adjustments to the ward boundaries are necessary in order to maintain practical equality of population inside each ward. Ward 2, 4, and 5, and 6 um, are going to be changing. So uh, they're out of alignment. Therefore, a public hearing is needed to consider an ordinance to align them. And so here's Mike Haynes with the Development Services talking a little bit more about these boundary lines. Two years ago, changes were made to wards, the boundaries of wards 1, 2, four and six and this year changes are needed towards to the boundaries of wards two four five and six um, obviously we're eight years out from the census so I would just point out that there is as many assumptions built into this as there uh, ever will be and of course two years from now we will have the new census data and be able to reset the boundaries uh, based on the census and of course, as you can see, it's every two years. It looks like um, sometimes they just need to double check and make sure that the population are within uh, the right parameters. They just don't want one ward to be bigger than the other wards. So they have to adjust. And most likely what we're going to see is a lot of the ward systems moving further west because there's not much east to uh, the city of Missoula. And um, yeah, and so here is, let's talk about some more things. Um, by keeping each ward 3% plus or minus the average population, which is 1,200, 300, 12,300 people in each ward, um, which is uh, which adds up to about 76,383 residents in the city of Missoula based on the last census, which I think was two years ago, since he says um, the next census is in eight years from now. So, it, you know, it's every 10 years. Anyways, here's Mike Haynes. He's talking about what needs to happen in these wards um, if we're going to have balance. We look at Ward 6, obviously, has to expand into Ward 2. Uh, this is the preferred option, and um, we are talking about... Uh, so right now, the, the um, boundary is the river, so everything that's in the purple shade uh, north of the river is uh, Ward 6 expanding into Ward 2. And I'm pretty sure this is Mullen Road, uh, Palmer Street, and West Broadway, <laughs> and Russell that we're talking about here for these boundaries. All right, so as you can see, um, the, uh, most of Ward 2 has engulfed um, from the county uh, Ward 2, um, Airport Boulevard. So Airport Boulevard is a big... Uh, um, big growth within the Missoula community. So they have to readjust for those wards. And you know, like Ward 6 has to take a lot of Ward 2. And then of course the other wards around Ward 6 also have to take part of Ward 6 as it slowly adjusts and everything like that. But there's always another uh, issue that uh, Mike Keynes also talks about. Uh, there are many rules in place to make sure growth doesn't take away from other wards. Uh, balance is maintained within the city. Michelle Cares reflects on how much members, how how, how much members on council uh, affect the ward map. Here's Michelle Cares. Jordan Hess, and no no offense, sorry, buddy, um, is no longer on council. I imagine there will be a significant shift in the. I I wonder if there would be a significant shift in the way that our wards are painted, and. Uh, I would think that there should be. And my question is, will this activity that we're taking now with great deference to a certain person's location preclude a bigger with redrawing at some point when that person is no longer on council? And, you know, that's just a simple question of um, if they don't live in their ward, can they really represent their ward, especially when the ward boundaries change? Um, 
Mike Haynes went on to explain that the city is growing west and wards have to adjust to the larger population that will come from the west side of Missoula. Mike Haynes also talks about how often this happens and why we do this. Did this one significant annexation at the end of last year. I think most of the other annexations we've done have primarily been open space. Um, but yes, we uh, each this it, this uh, analysis is done over every two years, looking at the uh, respecting the new uh, city limits and also accounting for uh, the new population that we would expect as we see new development occur. Okay, so a lot of times they take uh, real facts, but then they also have to take into account the vacant homes in a lot of these areas that are being developed, uh, future development, future annexation, just a whole bunch of things they got to uh, prepare for to make sure all the words are even. Um, the whole... A lot of this has to do with like, um, you know, majority of people and each ward has, you know, X amount of majority and they want to make sure that it's all even on all fronts. So not one ward has 30, represents 32,000 people while another ward represents 100. They want to make sure that everyone has the same amount of people and the work is evenly divided. So the next quote I have is not from Mike Haynes because that pretty much wrapped it up for you guys. Um, March 11th will be the public hearing, and they will take um, they will talk some more in detail about the uh, satellite imagery and data on word boundary changes and more in more detail next Wednesday during the committee of the whole meeting. And this committee of the whole meeting was happening first and foremost in the morning, so about 9:30, 9:45. You can go to that meeting. You can ask questions. But again, the public hearing is going to be on Monday, March 11th, where they discuss the new word boundaries. All right. Admin and finance, this is really short, but this is all about MCAT. Tis the season for franchise negotiations, and MCAT is going to be in negotiations with Charter Communications. Um, so the city is at the forefront of helping uh, MCAT. They regulate MCAT. Um, so what they're doing now is that the city wishes to extend an expired franchise um, agreement through Charter Cable until June of 2019 so they can have time to prepare negotiations. And at the same time, um, here's some, a little bit more information uh, courtesy of Steve Johnson with Central Services who is talking a little bit more in detail about this. We, we are negotiating our beginning negotiations with regard to an extension or renewal of that uh, franchise agreement. Uh, very, very early in the process, uh, we are awaiting the results of a financial audit that we are having the firm who, the legal firm who is representing the city carry out. And once, once we have the results from that, uh, the attorney who is representing us is finishing up our uh, proposed changes to the franchise agreement, which we've, I think, shared with some of the council members who have been involved in that process. Uh, but we think that it's going to take some time. Uh, this extension is through June 30th of 2019. If, if we need an additional extension past that date, we'll be back to you to discuss that with you. But All right, so that's kind of um, the, the quote I have from the meeting. But some more information, this will cover the fiscal year 2019 budget, uh, while the 2020 fiscal year budget will be discussed in perpetuity with a franchise fee negotiation. And the point of this is that Charter Cable is the cable company here in Missoula, and they use the Missoula's cables right of way. A town came together and said, hey, we want to uh, uh, build our own cable um, microwave, you know, Waterworks Hill has the giant microwave cable that gets all the signals and then from there kind of expands through the city of Missoula in terms of cable um, television. And so the city of Missoula is like, hey, if you're going to uh, sell cable in our town, you have to give uh, a, a net profit to um, Missoula to start their own public access television station. And hence MCAT was born. And now, uh, um, with Bresden Cable, we had a franchise fee negotiation that went from um, 1990 to about 2003, and then 2003 to 2018, which expired just last December. Now they're asking for the uh, extension that goes until June for financing, just honoring the previous agreement. But this is uh, a big franchise negotiation agreement that will be talking to them. So it's going to be it's, – it's an ongoing process. We're, right now, we're at the mercy of waiting for Charter's response, um, but the city is working um, very hard for us here at MCAT so we can serve the uh, city of Missoula. All right, enough uh, soapboxing here. Let's talk about some um, land use and planning because this is very interesting because um, 
this has been going on for pretty much like six, eight months. Uh, this guy, Andrew uh, Hagmeyer from CAPS, which is Community and Planning Services, and he, you know, he has undertaken a lengthy public process to draft a land use map to support and complement the county's growth policy. So he showed up to the city of Missoula, since the city is in the county, doesn't mean, I mean, it follows the county. It, we're, just because you're in a city limits doesn't mean the county doesn't affect it. So anyways, Here's Andrew from CAPS. He talks about what's he, what he's been doing for the, for this amount of, for this uh, long amount of time. The big idea centers around this I, this one community approach to land use planning in the area around Missoula. What we heard from people is that um, you know people people don't see our community as a city Missoula and a county Missoula. They don't when it comes to land use. Uh, they don't really care or know that there's two jurisdictions. Um, you know, we both have our own roles and responsibilities, but they don't really care. So they just want to have Missoula. They just want to have a great community. And so that was that's our vision is that there's this one community approach. All right. So um, and one of the things that he came across is um, during this process, Andrew has been in many community councils, Bonner, Seeley, Florence, Clinton, Frenchtown. The purpose is to see how uh, these communities want their area to grow. And there's going to be growth regardless. So they have to figure out how um, they want their communities to grow regardless of um, pushback on being like, oh, not in my town. I want, I want my town to be small and inclusive. But with an ever-expanding Missoula population, a lot of that is moving west. So a lot of the towns like Frenchtown and that area and uh, Florence areas are feeling the pressure of the Missoula population growth as it starts bleeding over into the county on that on the west. Andrew talks about the importance of individual communities because um, as we have the idea of one big community, he also wanted to mention that individuality of each community is just as important. Well, these neighborhoods within the area outside Missoula still have a lot of uh, character and unique identity. East Missoula, East Missoula, Bonner. They both, uh, they both have a lot of pride and unique identity. And so we want to try to facilitate that and keep that aspect of their community. So that, what that means is that we really wanted uh, uh, the public to have a say in what the land use is in their area looks like. All right, so you can um, always look up more information. They're, they're, they're going to be – it's constantly gathering information. They're going to have a public hearing uh, with the county commissioners – Pretty soon, um, you can find out more. I'll tell you a, bit, a little bit more about that a little bit later. But of course, at many meetings, Andrew attended was looking for what people want in their community grows because uh, county development in Missoula's final frontier is Missoula's final frontier, since most of the city of Missoula's frat flatlands have been developed or in the process of being developed. Andrew talks about CAPS, um, which is the community council. Uh, wait, wait, not community council, but it's the community and planning services uh, in how uh, much say they have in county development and issues that come along with um, the realities of this. We have a constraint. We have constrained geography. As we know, we have this valley. It's surrounded by mountains and it has rivers running through it. So the things that constrain us are also the reasons why most of us live here. Uh, the county doesn't control a ton of infrastructure. We control roads, but we don't really control a ton of sewer and water. And so um, are the limitations of our infrastructure that we have in the county is a reality that we have to deal with. And then, of course, the housing prices, that, that is an issue right now, is a reality that we need to face. And of course, you know, like one of the things is um, when, it's, when, a, when a community like Bonner, East Missoula, they get to a certain size and they're so close to the city of Missoula, they can get attached to, to the sewer and the water system. But a lot of times um, communities have that chance to really look into whether, that, whether or not they can be annexed by Missoula. And that all comes down to water and sewer. Um, if you hook up to the city's water and sewer, there's sometimes always the a memorandum of, of, of understanding that you might be annexed in the future. So that's one thing that a lot of these communities are really concerned about is that they don't want to be part of the city. Uh, a lot of people who move out to the county, um, it's the houses are cheaper. You know, you get better USDA loans in terms of, you know, rural development kind of deal. But a lot of times uh, the city is just additional taxes if you move in with the city. So um, Andrew, he, he talks about that kind of uh, gentrification issue that's been going on. I Many people are just like, just like, okay, there's two, uh, there's, you know, like the whole like, you know, 10 acre property, but they really want to talk about, um, 
you know, why it's an, why it's the only way for Missoula to keep up with the amount of population that's coming into Missoula, which Mike Haynes was talking about, which um, in Missoula, uh, there's an average growth of about 1,500 people, uh, 1,500 residents in the city of Missoula every year. So that's the growth. And uh, this, the city is um, kind of behind in developing these places for folks. So here's Andrew once again about talking a little bit more about gentrification. It's pretty widely accepted in this document that, uh, or, or in, throughout this outreach process, that we need to have clustering and that we need to have incentives to clusterize as well. And so those those tools are going to have to absolutely be incorporated if we really are serious about protecting our agricultural lands as we continue to urbanize and our wildlife habitat as we continue to urbanize um, and our access to our public areas as we continue to urbanize. So. Um, we're really going to push it with the commissioners that that we not only incorporate it, that it makes the final cut of the land use plan, but it then is also incorporated in our zoning regulations as well. So the importance of what Andrew is uh, referring to is that it's um, he growth is going to happen. And that's one of the things that he wants to get through to a lot of people in the county is that there's going to be growth outward from beyond the city. And a lot of communities have this chance to really say how they want their community to grow. And if you want to know how your community can grow, you can always go to the county's website, which is like ci.missoula.mt.us. But it's as simple as typing co.missoula.us. Yep. It's just the difference between the co and the ci, one is city, one is county. Plain and simple. And you can see their county's website, all the events, all the stuff right there as well. But you can always go to uh, the city of Missoula's website, ci.missoula.mt.us, for these uh, meetings and more. And, yeah, that's pretty much it for my uh, city council report for you all. Um, I have some art clips for you guys. And I got some um, events that are happening. So here is art from the Clay Studio of Missoula, which will be ending next uh next week on the 22nd. So you only get so much of a chance until next Friday. So this weekend, there's going to be a couple live streams that MCAT's going to be doing, both from here and from Sentinel. Tomorrow night is a double header starting at 4.30. Um, you can watch it on our live stream via our Facebook page at Missoula's Community Media Resource. Once again, if you want to learn more about MCAT, you can go to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your local resources uh, for everything Missoula. I was going to say something else, but I just kind of like, eh. I'll just move on to the next thing. All right. I just wanted to also mention that um, Dude I Just Drew is also live streaming uh, Saturday. So you have to like Dude I Just Drew on the Facebook page to get notified that we're going to go live. And um, if you haven't noticed, um, I'm wearing a shirt uh, that is designed by um, the artist Rowan, who uh, is host and uh, competitor on Dude I Just Drew. If we take a closer look, see, look. It's a cat in space that's winking, and it looks like this guy right over here is just like, give me a kiss. So yeah, I think it's adorable. So if you guys get a chance, 
You guys can watch Dude I, Dude I Just Drew, which will be popping um, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. We got Missoula Art Museum curator Steve Glukert taking on Rowan Lemus. All right, let's talk about some events that are happening. It's time for your Missoula events. I'm going to try to get through this as, po as fast as possible. Um, um, I'm not going to talk about the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival too much. Uh, they have a bunch of movies coming out. They have the short blocks happening on Saturdays, um, starting as soon as 11 a.m. So you guys can do the rocks and do that. But starting Friday morning, of course, as always, if you're interested in doing some indoor activities fun, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Mizmo Gymnastics, and Roots Ecker Sports Center is a great place to be indoors, out of the cold, but also recreating. But if you want to be outdoor, uh, if you are, if you are an outdoorsman, but <laughs> You're not ready to go outdoors quite yet. They have an outdoor recreation and motorsport show at the Southgate Mall starting 10 a.m. About now. It's going on Friday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. And they're basically going to have a bunch of, you know, they, they a lot of times what they do is they wheel in a bunch of these uh, giant uh, boats or uh, ATVs, all these deals inside the Southgate Mall. You get a look at them all and kind of see what all these uh, things are happening. So that's going to be the Southgate Mall. It's, it's a shopping thing. Um, family story time at Missoula Public Library, and this is for um, three days a week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 10.30 a.m. most days, but Sunday is in the afternoon. It offers a theme story time at the Dragon Rug, which may include songs and an art activity, and that's going to be at the Missoula Public Library. Tiny Tales is perfect for engaging with reading as well, and they usually do this um, in it, Tiny Tales is like a group of kids. They bring a bunch of books down to the large meeting room, and the kids kind of get a look of, of all the books, meet other kids, and just learn about reading in books and about learning your local library. My niece is four, and she she's like, boom, scan, boom, done, and she leaves the library. She's like, I got a book, and that's it. She's really smart <laughs> in terms of figuring out the whole checkout system at the library. Anyways. Also at the library is Yarns and Watercolor starting at 12. And if you're interested in going to the Missoula Senior Center, Cribbage and Bridge, around lunchtime, you guys can enjoy. Teenage Writers Group is happening at 3.30 p.m. It's uh, usually in the young adult section. You can come into Teen Writers Group and let your inner artist flourish meet places. But the young artist librarian will be on duty, and they will know where to send you. And also happening tonight is the Family Friendly Friday at the Top Hat. Every Friday from 6 to 9, they have fun, family fun activities, drink specials, and sometimes they have bands just for kids. Um, Zach is doing a kids rock camp, and they'll be playing at the, uh, I, I believe it's going to be playing at during uh, sometime in March. So it's the girls rock camp from the Zach will be playing at the Top Hat, not this Friday, but look forward sometime in March. Well, like I said, um, kicking off at Hellgeek's Elk Lodge is the Big Side Documented Film Festival. It's called Out of Omaha. Filmed over eight years, Out of Omaha follows black twin brothers as they come of age in racially divided Omaha, Nebraska. From director Clay Tweel and executive producer Jay Cole, the film examines what it takes to overcome uh, systematic injustice. Johnny Appleseed, world premiere at the MCT. This is the Missoula Children's Theater, and this has been a play that's been um, made and produced here in the city of Missoula, and it will go out on the little red trucks all throughout the communities all around the world. It is International Theater Company. They go around, and they're going to teach kids um, Johnny Appleseed, but this is the premiere night of all the plays that will be happening over the summer where a bunch of kids will get a chance to do the Little Red Truck MCT. MCT stories explore the fascinating history of John Chapman, who was gently determined to make his friends with all creatures and to plant apple trees throughout Ohio River. His travels with his faithful apple seed buddies yielded happy songs, unexpected friendship, and endless orchard of juicy, crisp apples to nourish tummies across the land. The tale of Johnny Appleseed is a sweet reminder that kindness is the core of a happy life. And that's happening tonight at 7 p.m. Also happening seven tonight, 7 p.m. tonight is the Vagina Monologues. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I, 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 I said that a little too hard, but uh, starting tonight at 7 p.m. as well. There's a lot of things happening at 7 p.m. tonight. The Vagina Monologues is going to be playing at the Denison Theater. Doors open at 6.30. It's $10 cash only. I guess they don't want to accept anything else but cash. It's at the door. All proceeds benefit the University of Montana Student Advisory Resource Center. So, um, Vagina Monologues tonight at 7 p.m. All right. So, I have another art clip for you guys. I'm going to take a, a 
quick breather and cough out whatever I have. <laughs> and this is uh, from the Missouri Art Museum featuring the Big Sky High School's art exhibit. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Very thank big thank you to Rick Phillips who produces those art clips for us. Let's talk about the rest of the events that are happening for your Saturday. I just want to also mention right now is that MCAT is not doing Saturday drop-ins this Saturday specific specifically because uh, Saturday uh, because Big Side Dr. Mirren Film Festival is doing their teen um, teen doc class, and this is a teen intensive doc class where they invite teens from all over who qualify for uh, a scholarship-based um, class for a lot of kids who are gung-ho about making documentaries. So they're borrowing some of our cameras from MCAT so we don't have enough supplies to hold a um, full Saturday drop-in. So we're not doing Saturday drop-ins. Um, but go out and see documentary. There's a lot of there's a lot of them happening. Orchard Homes Winter Market all of February. But this happens from nine to about one p.m. and it's another winter market, and they're going to be doing it at the barn just off of reserve. You can't miss it. Um, winter market at the Missoula Senior Center. It's going on up until the farmers market begins, and it's happening from eight a.m. to one p.m. and you can check that out every Saturday at the Missoula Senior Center. First aid CPR AED certification. It's never too late to learn CPR. And if you're in a, uh, if you work with uh, people, kids, you never know when you uh, might have to save a life. So this course teaches uh, participants skills with the American Heart Association research pro proven practice while watching technique. And you, it's going to be at the Grizzly Pool. It's right by the Dahlberg Arena. It's the Grizzly Pool. If you don't own the Grizzly Pool, you can always look it up. Anyway, blah blah blah. Anyways, 10 a.m. tomorrow. You can sign up by calling 243-27. Six three, or you can visit uh, the online registration portal through the umt.edu. It's forty-five dollars per course and sixty dollars combination for first aid, CPR, and AED. Especially if you're going into the medical field and you want to get a CNA, like you know, just like you know, like CNA is like kind of like the next step beyond um, first aid and CPR training. But this is just kind of like a, a, a foot in the right, a step in the right direction, and this is pretty much for anybody who wants to do it. Again, that number is two four three two seven six three. It's you know, it's never a bad idea to learn to learn how to save a life. Um, Hands-on science, terrific teeth. Spectrum Discovery Center is talking about teeth. They get to learn different shapes and sizes of teeth and why animals have them at the Discovery Bench today. And they're going to be at the uh, Spectrum Discovery Center tomorrow at 10 a.m. There's the Saturday Family Art Workshop. Hey, your kids can't do Saturday drop-ins, but they can always go to the art museum from about 10, 11 to 12. It's a free art workshop for family. Uh, the belief that art builds empathy, understanding, and respect for others. Civic Kids aims to foster civic engagement and share community pride through art making. And they're going to be doing that at the Missouri Museum tomorrow at 11. Winter Storytelling. If you want to go to the Traveler's Rest State Park, it's an amazing place where you can learn a bunch of things. Stationed in Montana during the height of the Indian Wars, Captain Charles Ron proved 
an unlikely hero and an undispensable leader in numerous battles, author Robert M. Brown will be there, who portrays the uh, officer and tells the tale that illustrates the transformation of the Frontier Army from the Civil War legacy into elite fighting force, and it's $5 per person, and it's free if you're a member of Traveler's Rest. And Traveler's Rest is up towards, I believe, Hamilton? I believe, but don't quote me on that. All right, moving on. (laughs) Like I said, Big Side Documentary Film Festival, I want to I want to mention this because it's their short blocks. And the short blocks, they're going to have four short documentaries will be playing at 1 p.m. at the Wilma. And I believe that the short blocks are probably the best blocks because it gives you engaged in documentaries. But they're short, which is good because you can kind of get a taste of what the documentaries are all about. But if you get that, if you get the bug then you pretty much watch every documentary that happens during the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival. This is kind of like a introduction. Uh, this is how I like to um, express, it's, it's, it, I think a short documentary films are, is a good um, uh, toe tester for the waters. All right, anyways, Lady Grizz are gonna play versing Idaho State, 2 p.m., Dahlberg Arena, it's Lady Grizz basketball. How to medicate with cannabis, the Hope Center at 3 p.m., whether you're new to cannabis or second concierge, the uh, constant development in technology can be intimidating if you identify as either of the people or if you just want to learn the basics about medicating with cannabis. This is the event for you. It's going to be at the Hope Center starting at 3 p.m. It's going to be at 2145 South Avenue, West Missoula. And then finally, for your Saturday weekend, Montana Fishing Film Festival. While there's other film festival going on, the University of Montana is hosting their own film festival, which is about fishing. Fly Fishing Film showcases the Rocky Mountain trout anglers of all ages, genders, and skill level, and they are fun grassroots events. Um, hashtag the most fun you <laughs> can ever have off the river. That's a long hashtag. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys are interested in doing some things later on tonight, um, the infamous uh, string dust, there's is going to be bluegrass music at the Wilma. You're going to have Bannon Moshant Union Club. You're going to have Art to Roll Drive at Top Hat Lounge tonight. But of course, your Saturday night, if you guys are going out and about, you got Absolutely with Chris Moon, DJ Music. Chris Robinson is going to be at the Top Hat Rock Music. Annual Luau Party is going to be at Lolo Hot Springs. Hey, it's like one of the, you know, it's like if you really like those ironic things where it's like, it's winter, but I'm going to dress up like it's summer. So that's kind of what's happening. Don't freeze to death. Okay. And that's going to be at Little Hot Springs. Um, Russ Nassett will be at uh, the Union Club. And, of course, MCT Center for Performing Arts will be doing um, the Dawn of Disco uh, documentary film will be playing at the MCT. So there's a bunch of or- places that will be playing the Big Side Documentary Film Festival. And you can f- learn more information about Missoula events by going to MissoulaEvents.net and looking for the hashtag Big Sky Film Fest. But you can always go to BigSkyFilmFest.org for more information. All right, that about does it for me. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Be sure to watch all the live streams that are happening this Saturday, starting at 4.30, Missoula Community Missoula's Community Media Resource on Facebook. You can see all those live streams. And also, if you like any of those pages, you get notified of any live upcoming uh, of any live streams that are currently happening. So, without further ado, I want to thank you guys for joining me and. I'm going to be doing Dude I Just Drew tomorrow. And if you want to watch us, it starts at 7 p.m. live from the Dude I Just Drew Facebook page. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph.